When I told you about the M4 MacBook Pro, I told you it would be the strongest computer that Apple has ever made, even stronger than their Mac Pro. What I was not expecting though was that the lower end M4 Pro chip would also beat out the Mac Pro and take the mantle as the second strongest Mac chip. And not just on the Mac, Apple is literally dominating the charts with their M4 CPU performance. So the big question now, a week before these come out, while you're still deciding which Mac to order, should you get the M4 Pro? Pro chip or should you get the M4 Max chip because the answer might actually surprise you. All right, guys, we have some serious momentum here. The goal of 400,000 subs before the end of the year is alive and well, all because you guys are killing it. So no big speech here. Let's keep the momentum going, sub to the channel, and let's talk about these new M4 Pro and M4 Max chips. All right, so when we're discussing the M4 Pro and the M4 Max MacBook Pros, it is important to note right off the bat that these are the same laptops. There's no difference in ports. There's no difference in cameras or speakers or display or anything like that. The difference between these Macs is just the chips themselves. But that also shows up in some surprising areas, including the exact types of configurations you can make depending on which chip you pick. So for the M4 Pro, it starts at $2,000 for the 14-inch MacBook Pro for a binned version with a 12-core CPU and a 16-core GPU. To get the full 12-core version with a 20-core GPU, you have to spend $200 more. The 16-inch MacBook Pro, however, does start with the full M4 Pro chip, and there is no option for a lower-end version, but the starting price of that laptop is much higher at $2,500. Now, there is some interesting things to note here about the M4 Pro. First of all, the memory starts at 24 gigabytes, and it only has one upgrade option to 48 gigabytes. And the 48 gigabyte option is $400 more. Now, while 48 gigabytes is a lot of memory, there is something really strange about this. And that's because technically you should be able to upgrade the M4 Pro chip all the way to 64 gigabytes of memory, considering the M4 Pro Mac mini has an option for a 64 gigabyte configuration. I'm not sure why Apple isn't giving the M4 MacBook Pro the same love, especially because I think the MacBook is a much more popular computer than the Mac mini. So I feel like it would actually have more sense to have more configurations on that than the Mac mini. So yes, the M4 Pro MacBook Pro Max is out at 48 gigabytes of memory. But let's answer another question. Is it worth upgrading to the M4 Pro chip for $200 more? Well, right now there are no leaked benchmarks of the base model M4 Pro chip, even though we do have leaks of the higher end chip versions. That's because Apple does not usually send the base model unit to reviewers. However, I can do some simple math to see what those results would look like by dividing the 14 core CPU benchmark and then multiplying that number by 12. So take this number with a little bit of a pinch of salt, but this is probably around the number that we will see. And you can see some nice gains in CPU performance with those extra two cores. You're netting around a 21% improvement in multi-core CPU performance. As for GPU performance, well, I have to do the same thing here, but getting the 20 core M4 Pro GPU gives you around the same jump with a 22% performance increase. So for $200, you are getting basically around a 20% performance bump on both multi-core CPU performance and GPU performance, making this upgrade highly worth it if you care about either one of those additional specs. And as you can see in just a moment of foreshadowing, this is probably the best valued upgrade you can make for your entire MacBook Pro. Because after this, well, I said foreshadowing, but uh, you know, spoiler alert, it does get murky. Because let's look at the M4 Max. If you're upgrading to this, you're gonna be spending a lot more money because the cheapest 14 inch M4 Max MacBook Pro starts at $3,199. And that's for the lower end 14 core CPU variant. Now, you might say, why is there such a big price jump for just a chip? Well, that's because Apple is forcing you into some upgrades here, whether you want them or not. First of all, you must get the M4 Max with one terabyte of storage. There is no 512 gigabyte option. Secondly, the M4 Max comes with 36 gigabytes of RAM, not 24 gigabytes. And again, there is no option to go any lower than that. Basically, if we take an M4 Pro with similar specs, again, no 36 gigabyte option there, so you have to pick between 24 or 48 gigabytes. So on the lowest, you're looking at an $800 upgrade to the M4 Max chip plus $200 for one terabyte of storage. Now, the question we have to determine is, 
is that upgrade worth it? Well, let's be as kind and as generous as we possibly can be by also adding 48 gigabytes of memory to the M4 Pro, which is 12 more gigabytes than the 32 gigabyte M4 Max. And with one terabyte of storage, you still come out $400 cheaper than the M4 Max. So is the M4 Max worth $400? Well, this is actually pretty shocking because this 14 core version of the M4 Max has the same CPU core count as the M4 Pro. So the only improvement, the only thing your money is getting, all of that money is a faster GPU, moving up from a 20 core GPU to a 32 core GPU. Now, again, the tricky thing here is we do not have the exact benchmarks for this 32 core GPU model to see how much of an improvement it is over the 20 core M4 Pro, but we do know the 20 core M4 Pro benchmark and we do know the 40 core M4 Pro GPU benchmark. So again, a little bit of the uh, back of the napkin math. I, I think we could find out something close here because we can see the M4 Max is almost double the GPU score of the M4 Pro, and it has double the core. So the scale here is almost linear, but there is a little bit of degradation. So with a little math, we can find out that there's around a 14% loss in linear power at the top end. And if I apply that to a direct, and I stress this really back of the napkin math of dividing the core count, by the score for the M4 Pro 20 core and then applying a 14% loss then multiplying that number by 32, we get this number, 152,900, which would be for a Geekbench Metal Score benchmark, which yes, puts it right in between the M4 Pro and the M4 Max chip. So this result looks in line with what you would expect, and that would give you about a 32% improvement in GPU capabilities over the M4 Pro chip. And that's a pretty sizable improvement, especially when you look at the full 40 core M3 Max, which scores about the same on that benchmark. Basically, this binned M4 Max chip in CPU performance and GPU performance is about the same to the higher end M3 Max chip from last year. But I stress that yes, this is a very expensive chip upgrade for something that is only going to net you a 32% GPU improvement. If you don't utilize your Mac for really GPU intensive tasks like 3D modeling, rendering, or gaming, or something like that, then this upgrade is completely worthless to you. Honestly, I think the base M4 Max, despite how impressive it is matching the older higher end M3 Max, is the worst value upgrade you can make. That's because the jump from M4 Pro to the 14 core M4 Max isn't as impressive as jumping up to the 16 core M4 Max. That's because this upgrade only costs $300 more, but for this $300, you not only get an increase in GPU performance, which is a little smaller at a 23% performance increase over the lower end M4 Max, but you also get two additional CPU cores, which nets you an 18% increase in CPU performance as well. But there's always a but, isn't there? Apple again forces you into another upgrade because the 16 core M4 Max does not have a 32 gigabyte option and the lowest memory you can get on this Mac is 48 gigabytes. So while the chip upgrade is a better value when you look at it from a cost perspective in terms of just the performance jump for what you spend on it, it is weighed down in value again because Apple forces you to add on more memory. And what if you don't need 48 gigabytes of memory? So while I initially saw these numbers and I thought I would advise that if you're spending this much money anyway to just spend $300 extra and get the maxed out M4 Max chip, I can't really offer that advice unless you also need more memory because now you're spending an additional $500. So what seems like a no brainer move actually required a, a lot of brain power. And I don't know if that's the right upgrade for you. You have to kind of figure that out for yourself based on what you're doing with your Mac. If you're doing something really intensive that requires a lot of memory and requires a lot of CPU power as well as GPU power, then that M4 Max chip is going to be an upgrade you wanna make. Because uh, if you're buying that Mac, you're most likely a person who is in a professional setting and you're probably making money on your machine. So any performance uh, increase that can save you time and, and by saving time saves you money, that's when these upgrades start to become worth it.
But that's kind of just like a blanket statement, right? So what have we learned here? Well, I think for most people, you're probably priced into that M4 Pro model considering the M4 Max is so expensive. So for most users, I think the base model is going to be the clear winner. But if you need more power, do not feel bad about spending that extra $200 for the full M4 Pro chip. For that $200, you get a reasonably priced laptop that has a more powerful CPU than the Mac Pro. That is an insane value. That is such an easy recommendation to make there. And that is just gonna offer you so much power. It's gonna age so well in terms of CPU and even in graphics performance, it's doing okay there. So that is probably the Mac I would recommend to most people. Well, the pro versions of these Macs, I guess. But then from there, you need to weigh how much memory you need. Again, 24 gigabytes on the base model is a decent amount and should serve a lot of users. So weigh that upgrade option. But if you know you need more memory, well, you can upgrade it to 48 gigabytes. Again, it's a pricey jump going up $400 more, but that is the only option. Finally, you need to decide if the expensive Max chips are worth it. For most people, it probably won't be, especially on the 14 core M4 Max chip because it doesn't get a CPU boost. But if you are a graphics heavy user and you know you need that GPU performance, you gotta get what you can get. And you're gonna wanna step up to the M4 Max chip for the impressive GPU performance boost it offers. And from there, you can even decide if you want even more CPU and more GPU performance on top of that. And more memory too, I guess. And that's when you should go for that 16 core or 40 core GPU uh, M4 Max model. And for that high price, you will be rewarded with what is the fastest Mac in existence right now with CPU performance above the Mac Pro and GPU performance that almost matches it all in a small laptop. And no matter what Mac you get, you gotta appreciate the raw power, the Apple engineering here. What Apple has done with these M4 chips is outstanding. It is an engineering marvel. And just looking at these numbers, you can't help but walk away impressed. And yes, I know, I didn't give you an exact answer on which Mac you should buy because it's not a clear choice for everyone. But I gave you all the data as we know it today, and hopefully that helped you out in picking between the M4 Pro and the M4 Max chip. And if it did, please give me a like, subscribe for more, including a better review when we actually get these Macs on hand. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.